I'm just doing a quick walkthrough on uh, how I approach my TA for GNMK. Um, so this is a stock that's risen about 8% very recently, uh, mostly due to some news that they have a vaccine they're rushing the development on. Um, so let's just go check Yahoo Finance and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, apparently, uh, they have submitted its um, coronavirus test to the Food and Drug Administration for emergency use authorization. If approved, the test can be used by clinical laboratories to test people suspected of contracting the Nova virus. They'll also get approved by the FDA a lot faster if it's found effective in the labs. So they could be selling the shit out of this. For some reason, we're not using the tests in the United States that have been developed in South Korea, um, which are more effective than this. We've opted to use uh, solutions developed within the domestic United States, so this one could be a big deal now. Um, anyways, back to the actual TA of it. Um, so our first step, as always, is going to be looking at the longer term charts and then working our way down to the uh, hour long charts to find an entry. So looking at the one week chart, um, right now the indicators I am using are an MA200, an MA50, the MACD, um, I have an RSI up right now, which I actually don't want. I want to use the Arun on longer intervals. The RSI really isn't very useful on um, like the weekly and daily charts. The RSI is really only useful for finding like optimal entries. So when you use RSI, you want to go into shorter windows and find a place to buy in. Or in the longer windows, the MACD and the Arun are signaling buy. But when you go to the shorter windows, the RSI is oversold, and make sure you kind of get into the you can get into the long position or the call position you want at the most optimal price. All right. So, anyways, side note. So we're actually using the MACD, the Arun, the MA200, and the MA50. And if we look um, back in the stock's kind of history. It's been semi bearish for a while. I wouldn't say strong bearish, but semi bearish. Uh, you look at the MACD, um, so it's kind of slid sideways for a while, aside from this huge high volume buy in right here. And that's mostly because of the news we were talking about just a second ago. So you can see the MACD is about to cross over. Um, if you don't know what the MACD is, I've discussed that in other videos. It's basically just the the difference between these two moving averages and then these bars in the middle here um, signal the difference, the divergence between these two lines. The Arun is just the simple buy sell. If blue is over yellow, buy. If yellow is over blue, sell. So right now we've got a very early Arun bullish signal and a very early MACD bullish signal. Um, all right, so if we actually, the next step here is to plot your supports. Uh, we've done this in other videos. Basically, we're going back and looking through for periods of particularly high volume and plotting a horizontal line along the top of those bars, just so we're aware of when there was a particularly high interest in buying or selling the stock in the past. Um, so you can see with uh, this one, back here, um, it's way back here, sorry about that. Oh, no, it was over here, no, where is the origin of this bar? Sorry, I should have plotted this while I was doing the video. Okay. So I believe I was doing this one super zoomed out, and it was supposed to be the top of this bar. I didn't quite get it there, so I'm going to move that one down a little bit. You can see how that was particularly high volume, so we plotted a support there. Uh, over here we have a particularly high volume, so we plotted a line on top of that bar. And then going back even farther, here is an area of particularly high volume, so we put a horizontal line on top of this bar. 
And then I think we went way back in history for this one. Yep, right there. And I accidentally moved this one again, so I gotta move it back. All right, there we go, we're all set. So analysts have set the price target for this anywhere between eight and eleven dollars. Um, conservatively, if you're a short-term trader, I would like to get in when the RSI starts to trend below fifty-five on lower intervals, and then when it gets closer to around this resistance at uh, seven point five nine. I'd honestly like to be even more conservative about that and probably get out around 7.5. Um, all right, so let's look at the daily chart and see if we're going to have an entry anytime soon. So our RSI right now is around 66. It looks like it's starting to go sideways down. We've got sell signals on the Arun. The MACD is still a bullish signal. So we might find an entry pretty soon here if we start trending sideways a little bit, which is what I hope can happen so I can get a lower entry. I'm hoping to get in somewhere around 550. Um, and all right, I think that's about it for my analysis on uh, GNMK. Um, actually, as a bonus to this one, I think I'm going to go into SPY real quick because this one was a pretty short one. So I've been watching and day trading SPY for quite a while. Uh, SPY has just absolutely plummeted below all of the support and resistances I have plotted. And I have not been entirely sure what's going to happen next. If you can see here, the last resistance I plotted was around... Uh, let's see, I need to shrink this chart a little bit. So the last resistance I had for it was around 260. And down here, there are not really a lot of high volume areas till we hit like uh, 200. So I kind of took a different approach on this one. Uh, as you can see down here, I'm using net volume to apply a lot of this. Um, but I actually went to trading view and kind of worked out a different model here. Hold on, let me show you. So um, this, I am using the indicator VPVR. Um, it's basically a volume indicator that uh, plots areas of particularly high volume or comparatively high volume uh, along the side of, you know, it lines them up with price and it goes through the entire price history and kind of figures out the, the comparatively or the comparative volume. Um, so using that, I kind of came up with a new, a few new uh, support and resistances here. Um, and also, in the news today, the Fed approved $500 billion in uh, financing for banks short term, which is probably going to lead the market to have a short rally tomorrow. In the long run, I don't think it's going to do too much. We're trending down whether or not the government likes it. Um, but using this, uh, I found some moderately high, if you look back um, compared to the entire volume history here, we have some moderately strong support around the 256 area. Uh, I think if we have a strong enough downward trend, we're, actually we already did get right through that, so um, I stand corrected. And then the next support uh, is around 245.30. Um, I don't know how the market's going to react to the 500 billion in financing. I, like I said, I imagine there's going to be a small rally tomorrow. So I've kind of plotted this as a target for re-entry for puts for me tomorrow. I'm hoping we see a rally to a price around uh, 275.90 so I can get a cheap put. Anyways, um, I hope you found that helpful, making sense of the absolute collapse of the market today. I know we had a, a circuit breaker, so that was pretty crazy. Um, and 
if you're interested in the program, I used to do all these charts. I just use Weeble, which is the same as my broker. If you want to hit that up, there's a link down below, uh, as well as my Twitter, all that other bullshit. So check it out. Thanks for watching.